Okay, a pleasant good morning to you. Good morning wherever you are. You're listening to the program, like it or not, on a different time schedule just for today. As uh, we have went through some little changes right there. But all the same, we're here with you late, but uh, we're here. Like it or not, on a beautiful uh, Tuesday morning from 104.1 Max TV Channel 3. And uh, we have uh, Mad Lab Radio. That's the app that you can download and you can view us any part of the world. We'll want to thank those people who are viewing us, uh, who have been viewing us from that time slot uh, from 8 to 9 in Trinidad and Tobago, in Los Angeles, and um, the greater New York. Top of the morning to you. With me on this beautiful day, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Edito Romero, who is right next to me right here. And uh, we have Mr. Aaron Mai. Is, uh, yeah, it's all right. Um, what are they? Okay, good. We've got to res reset the names right there. Uh, first next door, next to me is Mr. Edito Romero. And uh, in the blue, in the blue shirt, we have Mr. Aaron Mai. Top of the morning to you all the way from Cayo Center for Employment Training right here in San Ignacio. And we want to welcome them to the show, like it or not, on this beautiful day. Good morning to you, Mr. Romero. Well, you are no stranger. You are no stranger to the to the show. You have been here before, so congratulations once again, and Mr. Mai. Top of the morning to you. Thank you. Uh, pleasant good morning to our fellow people from Santa Elena, San Ignacio, surrounding villages. It is a pleasure to be here, and we ask you guys to stay tuned in. Well, of course, and the greater and the outer world as well, uh, Mr. Um, who is not on the camera right now, but we want to say um, good morning to you, and he will be sitting in with us in a few after. We get started in the show. Good morning to Mr. Uh, Blanco. Blanco. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, there you have it, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Romero. You you are the 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 chief the chief in charge of uh, the Kyle set. How long have you been in that position? Okay. okay. Yeah, we've gained a lot of experience. We have um, we have learned a lot, and uh, everything again is for the betterment of the institution. No? Okay. And um, this is our fourth year, and uh, uh, we we hope that 2019 is even better. All right. And uh, the great thing about uh, Kyle Center for em Employment Training uh, this coming Thursday, it will be the great day for the. Uh, um, for the facility, or what do you, is that the facility? Open the open house, the great open house, uh, which you have yearly. And what what do we expect for this uh, event? Yes, indeed, Mr. Rabon. Uh, next week, Thursday, November twenty second, from nine thirty a.m. to two p.m. 
We are having our annual open house, the 2018 Kyocet open house. And the purpose for us being here is actually to extend the invitation to the general public of the surrounding villages, um, all in the Kyo district. No? And if uh, you can listen to us further, Belize district, Stan Creek district, you are more than welcome to, to attend. Everybody is welcome. 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., our 2018 Kyocet Open House. We will be showcasing all of our trade programs and what we have to offer, what we do at Kyocet, the skills training, uh, and uh, uh, all of our practical sessions. Every single thing that we do at Kyocet will be on display. Okay. And um, Mr. Mai, what, what, uh, what, what role do you play in, 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 the, in the institution? Well, uh, you guys, um, the entire... Um, Santa Elena, San Ignacio, you guys know me that I've been at HANA's for 13 years and I've recently joined the team at um, Cayo Set with my manager, Mr. Romero. I am the new hospitality uh, teacher, level one. And so we will be showcasing um, five departments. We're creating a restaurant called a Deja Vu restaurant. We're having a, a, a bar area. We're, we're, we're having waiters and waitresses. We're having a full um, restaurant experience where we, we have the trainees, they will be cooking. Um, we have menus. If you guys want to order something to eat, we have a lot of food. We have uh, a, a, a virgin menu drink. We have drinks, um, natural juices. Um, and then we have the, the bedroom procedures where the trainees will showcase how to strip and make a bed. We will teach you guys how to um, fold napkins. We will teach you how to set a breakfast, lunch, and dinner table. And so I'm inviting all my friends them from San Ignacio and Santa Elena to come and check out what we do. We have a lot of prizes, a lot of giveaways. We have a DJ Flash. It's going to be a really good day. Um, we're expecting over a thousand people, so make sure you come out. Um, and we ask you also because we have food on, on sale and drinks on sale, so bring that money. So, so the food will be, will be, uh, will be sold at, uh, at a lower rate than, than, than usual, or is it going to be the same? At a very reasonable cost. <laughs> at a very reasonable cost. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, cheaper of course, but everything within the realm of a reasoning. No? Okay, right, yeah. right. So some of the foods that will be there, like the usual um, tamales and salbutes and a apart. Well, apart from our um, hospitality level one instructor here, Mr. Mai, we also have our food preparation instructor, which is Ms. Diane Galvis, and she also has a wide variety. We also have a hospitality level two program. And they also will be selling. So there's a wide variety. All of them have about, uh, in total, we have about 10 different items on the menu. Um, and Mr. Mai, maybe you can share some of those items. But I know, Mr. Mai, like some, some of those things are like, like the gourmet food and all. So all of this will be included. Yes, yes. We have um, lasagna. Okay. Uh, we have a sub sandwich. Uh, we have the regular stew beef with um, white rice, stew beans, and, and uh, stew beef. We have buffalo wings. We have. Um, we also have um, stuffed jalapenos, we have ceviche, we have um, devil eggs, we have um, a variety of different foods, so definitely yes. Okay, well I, I like it that uh, it's going to be happening on a, on a Thursday, and um, because at the back a lot of times people have their activities on Saturdays, and you, little did you know that a lot of people don't go out on Saturdays, yeah. and, and so you're having it on a day where everyone can come and be invited right there at the open house at Kyle Set this coming Thursday. Uh, Mr. Blanco is here uh, with us as well. Mr. Blanco, you'll have to take yes. uh, one of the seats there from us and then we will, we will rotate. Um, Mr. Blanco, you are involved with the mechanical part of the, of the training. Yes, sir. I'm currently the new automotive instructor. I've been, automotive. There, for, uh -huh. I've been there for over a year right now. And open house, I can definitely invite you to come in. You'll be glad you came. I mean, we'll be having our display of the competence our trainees have accomplished, the things they learn while they're, while they're accomplishing their training over there at the center. And I guess it should be a fun-filled day. I should, can't extend how much invitation I'm extending to the public out here. Please come out. Please see what your trainees are doing. Please see what the youths from San Ignacio, Santa Elena are doing here at Cayoset. Well, and, and in terms of automot automotive mechanic, I know when people are uh, getting trained to, to be a, a barber or a, a hairstylist, they usually have open houses where they can go and get free haircuts and all of that. Is there something at, at set where people can repair, rep repair their vehicles 
uh, at, a, at a low cost. Is, is that uh, something that is involved with, uh, with your department? Well, first of all, I usually begin with theory with my guys. I instill it in them that theory is most is fundamental for anything you're learning. And then actually we follow with practical. And yes, we do take in vehicles from the community, vehicles that we see won't be too much too hard to diagnose because I have found out sometimes that they do bring some vehicles that are in the worst condition. They've been shopped around all around Santa Elena, San Ignacio, and when they find out that the problem is too hard, that's when they try to bring it to us. But for that day, I guess we should be able to um, probably offer free scanning to, to scan the vehicle, just a diagnosis of what, the, what your vehicles entail, whatever code your vehicle might have. And then from there, you can choose to see if you see it fit to leave it there for us to work on or if you decide to take that to some other place. I mean, okay. scanning is always good for the vehicle. That's what you do in every garage. You scan okay. it. Okay, you know. and, and in, in, t in terms of uh, you knowing what's the ins and outs of an auto ma ma uh, automotive mechanic right there, uh, do you have in your mind, we don't want you to say it right here, but do you have... Uh, recommendations that you would give to these people well we we are filled up or you, or we would recommend you to I mean some of the students that have already passed through set have these services available and so you could recommend them to these different places I generally recommend everybody change your oil you know it's not that hard <laughs> it's not that expensive and it saves you a lot of money in okay, the end I mean, okay. just change your oil That's Keep changing your oil they require the required time yeah and that should give you a long, uh, long lifespan with your vehicle and proper maintenance. I don't like to do repair. I rather maintenance. So you take okay, care of the problem there you before, go. It, before it actually turns into something more severe. All right. And I know that some of the people are using wrong oil. Like myself, I always like to buy the cheap oil, the, the one in the Lee yellow, yellow bottle. But um, <laughs> you, you, you would recommend high quality oil, of course. Well, right there at the um, center, we actually offer oil servicing. We change your oil for you if you purchase oh, it there. Oh, there you go. And we actually have different types of oil sponsored by Valvoline. We have the, the semi-synthetic, the normal one, the base oil them. Okay. So we do offer depending on what the client requests. Okay. Or, or what you uh, recommend. Yeah, what we well. recommend yeah, and course. then the client has a final say. Like I say, many people are using the wrong oils and, um, you know, because of... Uh, the economic behind it, but uh, the the best way to go would be that same name that you mentioned there, the Valvoline. Valvoline. All right, then. The, how many? We have a question here. How many graduates have uh, took place at SET? Right. Um, well, Kyle Center for Employment Training was founded in 1995. It came as a result for us technical skills training. We found out that a lot of the youths in San Ignacio, Santa Elena. Some of them were dropouts. Some of them didn't have the opportunity to go to academic uh, to academic institutions, and so a technical skills training center was was founded up there where it used to be Camp Belisario, mm -hmm. and um, since 1995 they, they used to have graduation every year, up until about 2007 or so, and so after that uh, we recently started having graduations once again, and um, this year we had a second cohort of uh, trainees graduating. About a hundred of them graduated just now in July. And next year, July, we expect to do that once again. Approximately like 100 graduate every every year. Um, and uh, yeah, our, our institution, uh, the other question there says, tell us more about SET. Uh, but our institution is a technical skills training institution, vocational technical. Right now, we have a variety of programs. We have automotive mechanics. We have AC and refrigeration. We have electrical installation. We have food preparation, tourism front office, hospitality management. Uh, we have furniture making. Those are our programs. And we also have a, a partnership with St. Ignatius High School in which their ACE Evening Division students go every Wednesday night to Kyocet to learn our skills. As and well. of course, some of these uh, studies are also levels one and two. Yes, the difference between level one and level two is that a level one uh, trainee is considered to be a supervised uh, worker. He, he requires still some level of supervision. A level two trainee, he is he can be considered an unsupervised worker. You can leave a task with him, and he is, should be able to perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we can't forget the uh, tour guide in. Right, right. We also have a well. partnership with the Belize Tourism Board, in which um, uh, right now the way we we change it up, it used to be on the weekends. Right now, it's on the weeknights uh, okay. for three hours, five thirty to eight thirty p.m. We do the tour guide program, and at the end of the program, it's uh, about a three-month program in which at the end they get their tour guide license. 
Okay, it was a longer period, but it was. Short. Yeah, it used to it used to be six months because mm -hmm. it only used to be on the on the weekend, Saturday right. and Sunday. Okay. Now it's a shorter period. It's for about three months, three months and a half. And um, at the end, like what we mentioned, the the goal is uh, certification by the police tourism board in the form of a tour guide. Okay, and what's what's the cost for that uh, enrollment and? Um, well, program. the, the, the programs, they vary. You know, all of our day programs, they range around 1,500 mm -hmm. uh, average, and the tour guide program um, is about 1,200, 1,200 for the entire three months. But that includes, um, you had to talk about transportation for the trips, for the field trips. Right. You had to talk about um, the book. You had to talk about accessing a, a swimming pool because we do a swimming module. And so it, it actually entails a lot of cost, no? Um, technical skills training is expensive. That's what we talk to people. That's what we tell people. At the end of the day, we cater for everything. We um, provide all of the all of the ingredients whenever we cook. We provide all of the gases whenever we weld. We provide all of the oils whenever we change for the automotive mechanics. So we incur all of the costs, and that is why the training has uh, um, the total fees is about one thousand five hundred or so. Okay. Um, yeah. Has there any, uh, been any any uh, tour tour association? Or tour um, companies that would upfront a payment for a, 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 a student, and whenever the student graduate, then they would automatically go and work for them. Has that ever been done or actually, thought through? Actually, what has happened in the past is that we have received many different companies, no, um, resorts, um, that they actually send their employees to Kyoset for them to become certified because at some level they are already performing some type of tour guiding, you know. Mm -hmm. They are already attending to the um, tourists on some level. And so what they want is just certification. Okay. And so many different resorts were just saying, all right, here you go, five of our employees, go do the training, and so on and so forth, yeah? All right, well, that sounds great, uh, uh, Mr. Romero, and um, we do hope that uh, more people take up the challenge of getting involved with Kaya Center for Employment Training. Uh, the future is in our hands is the, is the is the slogan that I've always been talking about on this program right here as um, I always uh, promote Kaya Center for Employment Training here. And um, we look forward for more people to get involved. I hope that the appreciation would be out there for people to go to the open house to see more of what it's all about. For those who have dropped out of school, this is a way out for you. And um, we appreciate Mr. Mai and, and Mr. Blanco to give their all in, in, in this uh, institution and all the other people who are involved with it, the AC technicians and everyone yeah. else. Yeah, so it's a, what, what, what we define, Mr. Jim, is that um, technical training or technical skills training isn't only for probably primary school um, students or high school dropouts. Actually, our student population is made up of about 35% or so which are high school graduates. Yes. They already come with a high school diploma. Okay. But what you have is that there isn't any job opportunities out there. I mean, let's go be real. Let's go face the music. How many people could actually work in our office when they only have limited businesses out there? No, but our type of training is actually hands-on, practical skills training. And so um, you can be your own boss. You can be your own entrepreneur. You can make your own furniture and sell that. You could fix the refrigerator for, the, for your neighbor. You could change the oil for anybody for your own vehicle, right? And so this right here creates self-sufficiency, right? And so um, technical skills training is actually very, very important because that is where the jobs are right now. Right now, you could tell the joke off of the taxi man. The taxi man, uh, a taxi man comes and he tells me, you know what, I, I took a guy from point A to point B and uh, he told me that he went to DFC you get five thousand dollars for for his son go to to a high school, and he come out and then his son just to sit up on his sofa and not do nothing. So the five thousand investment must stay right there. Meanwhile, the neighbor must send his son go and an electrical installation at Kyle said. <laughs> for one year, he pay one thousand five hundred, <laughs> and then he immediately must start a wire houses after that and he start bringing one income. Right. So the return on the investment, the investment was right away. Right. And so we're part of the jobs in there, we're part of the opportunities in there. Actually, in a skills training, with your own hands, you could actually make one income. Well, we, we appreciate that. And uh, we need more people to come out and, uh, you know, talk about it. As a matter of fact, we'd like to invite some of the, the students to this program so that they themselves could give a, a first-hand account of uh, what, they're, what they're going through. My daughter is going there, and uh, she's uh, going through the... Uh, Hospital, not the hospitality, the food preparation 
um, program. And so we would like to encourage more people to get involved with, with Kaya Center for Employment Training. You have any other thing you would like to comment on right there, Mr. Uh, Blanco? Well, once again, I'd just like to extend the invitation to for the public, general public to come out and see our open houses. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. You'll be glad to see what the trainees are doing, and then you can actually learn something as well. If you have students or children who are a bit problematic, please send them there. The traditional education is not for all of us. Some of us learn better with actually doing and actually applying what we've learned, and I'm sure you'll learn something that day. Yeah, it, it, it is very beneficial for people to learn a skill. I mean, regardless, like what Mr. Mr. Romero rightly said, some have already did their training in high school, and but yet they, they, they are skillless. So this is a point where they can get involved. The thing that, that, that grasped me, though, some students are going there at the age of 15. Then they come out at the age of 16. Is that, is that how it is? The, the age is six, 15, 16? 15 is the minimum. And then they graduate at 16 or 70, whatever, between 16 and 17. But yet they cannot go and get a job immediately because they, they, the government would not qualify them. Uh, they have to be 18. So they would have to wait on that time unless they would start a business under somebody else's name. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? No, actually, um, a lot of... You see, with the beauty about the Kyle District is that it's tourism-based. Um, everywhere you go, if you go to a restaurant, it's you need cooks, you need waiters, and it's it, it we cater to the tourists. Um, the same thing with the resorts. A lot of different resorts in the Kyle District, and um, but these these our partners that we have. We when we normally send these, you could call them minors, 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds. Some of them actually still do get employed, Mr. Jim, as long as you got a social security card. Okay. As long as you got a social security card. So um, no, the the um, maybe not a misconception, but um, even if you're 16, 17, and once you show yourself, at the end of the day, it's about attitude. And uh, yeah, your skills. There but you but go. That's but the, the attitude. Right. Yeah. The attitude. That's because attitude. the type of training that we do at Kyle Set focuses on three things: the knowledge, which is the theory part; skills, which are the practical part; and the attitude, which are the soft skills, which people lack a lot. No. Um, and uh, but once you got the correct attitude, we find that, and that's what we try to we try more do with the correct attitude. We find that a lot of these businesses they do hire you, want regardless of the age. You know, 16, 17 doesn't really matter. I'm glad I bring up that yeah. because. You know, we want to have the right, the right perception out there, you know, and this yes, is yes. it right there. Uh, but maybe Mr. Mike could have, could have shared a little bit about, right. about that, about his experience, because he have a beautiful analogy of it. Well, definitely, because I, we know that you guys might be saying, well, what is Kyoset all about? And so that's why we're inviting the public to come and see what we do, because we are training some of the best waiters, some of the best waitresses, some of the best bartenders, some of the best cooks. Um, some of the, f the best uh, front desk people. And so because tourism industry is one of the biggest industries in the country, like Mr. Romero said, the, the Kyo District, what is happening is that m many of the major resorts, they come to us and we send our trainees to them and they are well satisfied and pleased with the level of performance that the trainees actually uh, manifests. And so what we're doing is that we're making sure that when the trainee leaves Kyo set after nine months, that they have a level of confidence that you know what, um, not because I am a waiter or a waitress, I'm anything less. Because everybody knows in the, in the tourism industry, a waiter or, or a waitress or a bartender will make about 1500 a month only on tips. In busy season, you make about $2,000 only on tips. What? Now, a bank teller might not even make that. And so there is money in the industry to make. And so we train you to make that money. And so we offer, um, like Mr. Romero said, we offer hospitality, which... I am level one. We have Mr. Erlin Puck that does level two. And our trainees, when they leave Kyoset, they are ready to work. When I was um, working in, outside at the restaurant, a lot of people say they want to work, they want to work. And then when you give them the job, they don't perform. But our trainees are ready to work because they have paid for it and they have been trained to work. And so they, when they get there, you, don't, you train them, yes, but they bring um, a level of confidence uh, to the table because they have a little experience that they've been exposed to at Kyle Set. One of the things that we do um, is that we expose them to all the major resorts in the Kyle District. We take them to Blancano, uh, Kaana, Char Creek, Deploys, um, you name it, and we take them there so that they can see what it is to be in the, in the industry um, live hand. And um, this exposure to them has been very um, 
it, it, it works very well. And so we're encouraging the general public to come out on November 22nd at the Kyocet compound um, to see what the trainees are, are, are learning. And of course, if you have a son or daughter that um, might have just graduated or does not want high school, then we ask you to come and see what Kyocet is all about, that you can get them in ready for the new year, which is in January. And so we wanted to mention that some of the prizes for the Grand Raffle, we have for couples, we have an overnight stay at Chaw Creek. We have a weed eater. We have dinner for two at Blancano. We have a free scholarship at SET. Uh, so we have a lot of good prizes. Uh, the open house is going to be, like they, like they, like they say, hype. It's going to be good. <laughs> We're expecting a yeah. good open house. So definitely, we invite you guys to come and check us out. All right. Well, what we'll do right now, at, uh, it's uh, 9.45, and that's right. If you're breathing, you're still alive. Right here at Maximum Radio 104.1. And we'll be right back right after this. Top of the morning to you. Listen to the program, like it or not. And a beautiful Tuesday morning. Good morning. I've had an overdose of that rock and roll stew. My soul is feeling low. I don't know what to do. So just play the music to suit my soul. The one that will last and will make me own. I'll give praises forever for all of my days. And words cannot say I won't. That I'll always have in store And I'll never want no more So when the songs are all sung And the music is played The dances are dance And the gates are all closed I'll have music forever And not fantasy The one you created in symphony Ooh, music maker Okay, good morning once again You're listening to a special... Uh segment of the program like it or not right here in the studios of the big maximum radio as usual it should have been from eight to nine but uh you know we make that uh, special changes for today and hopefully i'll be with you again and uh friday morning right here in the big maximum radio and monday and tuesday of next week same time right here good morning to you and uh, mr romero there's a question uh about uh, who uh, you know the eldest person right there in, in Kaya Center for Employment Training. How right. old how old and uh, male female it's a male female? We we right now have a, a male who is actually at the age of fifty five. Mm -hmm. Um he is currently undertaking the electrical installation program and we also have another individual which is forty in the same program electrical installation and we have many different individuals which are actually close to thirty year old thirty year olds um 25 year olds but the majority of our trainees are actually over the age of 18 I believe uh, more than 80% of Mr. Mai's class is over the age of 18 and uh, but these individuals right here have had like in the case of the 50 year old, 55 year old gentleman has had a long career um, various jobs out there and uh, he, he he wants to learn a, a skill no? mm -hmm. um, and he is doing electrical installation and in the case of the other gentleman as well he was a taxi man a baker a teacher, he actually has an associate's degree 
Wow. Fatih Fa Azul. Fatih Azul. And right now he wants to learn electrical installation. And he's also um, currently they are working on solar energy education. Wow. So he's he's also going to get certified as a solar technician. Um, right now we have we are in partnership with Solar Energy Systems Belize, which is based in Tiketo. And we have Mr. Sylvan Kufa there, and he's assisting with that. Uh, they are actually learning solar energy education as well. Okay, so um, you are really um, adding to the the curriculum as it is. Yes, is yes, so? yes. We are we we are exploring um, customized programs. We are adding. We are we are seeing what is in demand. Now, at the end of the day, whatever the industry demands, that is what our institutions are there for to provide the skills training. For whatever the industry needs are all right well mr may i know that you are you are already hype up because <laughs> you was already hype up when you were working at hannah's yes and yeah. um very good customer relation mm -hmm. person um so you are giving what you already know to yes. your your trainees and i'm pretty sure that they will be acquiring that part from you and um going forward definitely we believe that customer service is fundamental anywhere you go and we need to develop our trainees especially in customer service like for example tomorrow um, the trainees will have to do a catering for 80 people and so they do hands-on training that whenever they leave set if they get hired to perform at a banquet a graduation a wedding they know how to put a catering together so they're learning valuable skills that they can make their own money and so we are very excited we're pleased with the results that we have seen from the trainees that have left set and they are now working in the industry and they're becoming supervisors they're becoming managers and they're doing very well mr jim mm -hmm. all right well we look forward for the open house and um for people to bring their cars in for testing <laughs> you know what i mean so um yeah mr 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 blanco you yes, will sir. be there um supervising all the different uh well, I don't know if you have a limitation for people to come in and bring their vehicles, but by, by hearing this, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you will take up the opportunity to go and get their vehicle scan. Uh, scan. Yeah, I mean, we should have the opportunity to scan some vehicles there. I mean, of course, the trainees will be occupied showing the different modules we cover throughout the year, and I have to be supervising them, but I should be able to have one or two to do some scanning for any okay. inc any customer that might be interested in the service so the, the scanning applies to older vehicles or only to these modern vehicles? anything above the 85 once they introduce the ob2 once they have the 85 85 up once well i am in that <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> no but i'm saying um you know because i know some of the um like when they do conversion of gas to um, butane. butane they only you can only um, have both when it comes to um, you can have a switch to switch off from from one from to the other player, but it only applies to the more newer models yeah I mean the vehicles that come in once they're not third world vehicles they, they should have the onboard diagnosing computer on it so that should be able to be scanned by the computer okay in terms of electrical um, installation and all that do you all do uh, uh, surveillance cameras, uh, installation for that as well, Mr. No, not really. Um, what, what we do is we actually install the outlets for, let us say, around your house and stuff like that. But the installation and the setting up of the system, not really. That's okay. something more technical. Is, okay, We're more, um, you could call it network survey or something. Like that. No, okay. We have to do more computer right. networking. Yeah, because um, there's a lot of people who like that uh, but uh, yeah. yeah yeah but actually the electrical installation program is one of our most popular programs huh? okay and we have about 45 trainees we have 30 trainees in level one and we have um and we also have 15 in level two and uh, the beauty about it is that a lot of them at the end of the day when they finish level one level two they could get their wireman license okay. and um that is the way to go no um right now you need that license in order for do any job over there and Kyle provides that opportunity. Okay, you need that. You need that. That that um, hard yes. copy. Yes, that that upon the public utilities commission in Belize City. Um, that's where you could get the the examination. But once you are a level two trainee, we already we could actually guarantee you that you have passed that examination. Okay. Yeah. All right. In terms of uh, uh, um, um, the first aid 
training, do you all have that available or is that something that goes through the the uh Yes, we we, we, for we do the we tourism. do the training uh, as a part of the tour guide tour program. Guide. Yes. We do that as part of the tour guide program. Um, it's a module in there. In order for you to become a certified uh, tour guide, a licensed tour guide, you need to have the first aid CPR um, module um, in order to make the BTB award you this uh, licensing. So as part of the tour guide program, we do incorporate that right there. But nobody can separately go in and get that training. We, we would, but with a, with a need to have enough people. Um, oh, they're they only feasible if we have enough people, and then we, we could offer that training. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we talk sometimes back about having a, a driver's education program at SETA. What do you think? Would that still be something to, to look forward to, Mr. Blanco? Most definitely. I think it's something that we could look into for, for the future because um, a lot of these kids are learning to work on vehicles, and I've had instances where some of the trainees can't fix the car but can't drive it. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you need to drive it to test so it. To test it. <laughs> Correct. All right. All right. Well, that's a good, that's a good point. And um, we will look forward in, in, in working together with other um, uh, stakeholders and uh, see where we can develop some type of uh, energy where people can communicate together and, and, and go forward with that training. I believe that it would be something very essential. And not only for them, but whoever else who would like to learn to drive. We don't have... Uh, a training program as such here. We have in Belize City and they, they do cost a lot and they take up a lot of time. They take you two days today, then two days tomorrow for a period of maybe six months. And <laughs> then, you know, it's just a matter of eating out your money when you can very well learn to drive in a very short space of time, including the laws and regulations of the road. So um, we we'll definitely um, will look forward to that. And we are thankful that you guys have made it possible to come here on the program, like it or not, even though it was set for another a later date, a later time. Um, but we would like to invite the uh, people out there to the open house this coming Thursday. And we'd like to invite students, with your approval as well, to come up here and so we can chit-chat about you know, what they are doing and how they like it. And because, like my daughter, you can't tell her, well, you you know, uh, her mother passed away not too long ago, and we had thought that she was going to take off, and she says, Mommy said enough for stop. So that's it. We that's like very that. impressive, sir. We would like to have the people themselves, the, the students, to come up and talk and um, express their views of what SET is all about personally so that other people can um, get encouragement for them to, to go and, and get enrolled. I'm pretty sure that in the future, you know, we have enough class. And uh, maybe you may have to um, go and do extra night, night classes because I'm pretty sure that people will be going to set in the, in the, in the uh, months to come. Yeah, I think Mr. Romero is better capacitated to take on that question. Yeah, actually, Mr. Uh, Rabon, the, it's, it's quite funny that you said that because in you know, most programs, we're actually uh, performing close to full capacity. I mean, we, we barely got spaces available, no? Mm -hmm. um, and that's that why, maybe in a way, we don't market the institution much because word of mouth has helped us out in the past. Mm -hmm. And most of the classes are already full. We have limited spaces. And so if you don't say, I said they advertise much because of the same reason. But, and, and like what you said, they, um, many people out there are asking for night classes, say, you know what, I work during the day, but I would want. Right, exactly. And, and, and that is something definitely we could look into, no? Um, again, everything about about population and size and how many people are interested and definitely if we get the right amount of people we definitely could do something in you know, the different programs no? or maybe just by offering it no mm -hmm. uh, offering that extra um, time uh, that extra schedule then maybe we could have uh, worked something out for it but those people that can only make it in at the night no? well there you have it folks uh, talking right there to Mr. Romero um, he's a manager the manager for the Cayo Center for Employment Training right here in Santa, San Ignacio. And uh, we have Mr. Blanco, and uh, who is the automotive. automotive mechanic right there. And uh, he Mr. does, Mai. and Mr. Mai, the hospitality, hospitality and uh, management uh, director right there. One last thing, sir. Yeah, um, yeah, at the end of the day, the, our purpose, sole purpose for being here again this morning was actually to extend the invitation to the general public of the Cayo District, San Ignacio, Santa Elena, the surrounding villages, to come out to, to Cayo Set on Buena Vista Street, right um, immediately above the casino, the San, the San Ignacio Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, we are right there, yellow, you can't miss us, um, big buildings, 
And so November 22nd, next week Thursday from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., we are going to be having a lot of different um, prizes and surprises like what they, they say, you know. A lot of promotional items. We are, we are going to be having a DJ there, a lot of music, a lot of food, a lot of drinks, um, a lot of promotional items. So um, a raffle will be taking place, a lot of different prizes, um, a grand prize, uh, 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 overnight stay at Char Creek with, um, with uh, tour, tours. And um, so, yeah, it's going to be a, a big event for us, showcasing all our programs. And everybody is welcome to attend. Any single body can enter the gates. And uh, the opportunity will be there for you to enjoy yourself, to learn what Kyocet is all about, and walk away with something, you know, um, some, some promotional item. Okay, well, we'll talk with the management to see if we can do some type of uh, communication during the course of that day from set through the big maximum radio. Well, Mr. My closing statement as we are at 10 o'clock right now, so... Definitely, Mr. Jim, we want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to be live on Facebook on the air. Mm -hmm. And we are um, calling out our friends, families, uh, the members them of the trainees them to come and check out the open house on November 22nd, 9.30 a.m. to 2, 2 p.m. Right. It's going to be a great day, guys. We invite you once again to check us out. And thank you, Mr. Jim, for your time and your... Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, good morning to you. I hope that you have a blessed day. Remember, don't text and drive. Always remember to buckle up. Good morning. Oh, yes.